The Fan Without Fear Completest Retrospective. My name is Nick, The Fan Without Fear. Let's take a look at what's on our radar for today. Daredevil Season 1. In 2011, Marvel Comics reintroduced the classic origin stories of all of their most popular superheroes with a series of hardcover graphic novels, which were not well received. The Daredevil offering really fascinates me because it's like the creative team were influenced by Daredevil Yellow and the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. This hardcover graphic novel will be the last origin story I'm going to cover for quite a while. You can probably tell we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel now because about one third of the material in this book is less an adaptation of the classic issues of Daredevil and more a direct adaptation of Loeb and Sale's Daredevil Yellow. So in many ways, now we're dealing with an adaptation of an adaptation. In fairness, Daredevil Season 1 also spends quite a few pages adapting Daredevil issues number 5 and 6. But this strikes me as just a half-hearted attempt to differentiate this offering from the far superior Daredevil Yellow. There is also an original story about one-off character Father Mullen, which takes up about half of Daredevil Season 1. In recent years, there seems to be a desire to show Matt confiding in a man of the cloth. The whole thing feels a bit cliché to me. The first time we even saw a priest who knew Matt's secret identity was in the Ben Affleck movie. Then we didn't see it again until this graphic novel, but now the Netflix television series has finally made the concept work by effectively borrowing the character of Father Lantum from Runaways. I just find it interesting the father-confessor trope keeps popping up when they adapt this devil's story because it was never part of the original comics. Also, the execution of the plot with Father Mullen is a bit clumsy. It starts out seeming like a B-plot, but grows to be the central conflict of the book. Unfortunately, it's hinted very early on that the father has a long-lost brother, and the only possible candidate could be the obvious villain of the story. So there's really no surprises here. To make matters worse, this is one of the most boring stories in the fictional history of Nelson and Murdoch. Want to read a good adult drama about Matt Murdock practicing law? Check out Daredevil Redemption by David Hine and Michael Gados. Want to read a boring tale about land fraud involving a dirty politician trying to hassle a priest? That's an oddly specific request, but okay. Daredevil Season 1 is the book for you, you weirdo. This hardcover book spends half its pages in a retro action story, and the other half literally sitting down. Sitting in a law office, a city councilman's office, a library, and a church. More time is spent investigating a lease document than even going before a judge. They wrote a courtroom drama and hardly utilized a courtroom or drama. As for character development, there is some attempt to tack on an obligatory love story with Karen Page. What isn't directly recycled from Daredevil Yellow is only spoken about in Matt's inner monologue. Matt and Foggy both just say they love Karen. We just have to take their words for it because we never see any real romance. Karen doesn't even get a vote. She barely speaks. Sadly, the young woman is more objectified here than she was in the 1960s. Speaking of which, a lot of classic characters are more seen than heard in this graphic novel. Most of the story is told by the narration of Matt's inner monologue instead of through the dialogue and character interaction. Okay, so who's responsible for this? Well, in a lot of ways, we are. This book is just a cash-in, and publishers know some of us will buy anything if our favorite characters are on the cover. It may sound like I'm being silly, but I think I'm actually describing the exact problem with the creative direction of this book. As a reader, this feels very much like a commission piece, like something artists do more to pay the bills than out of passion for the project itself. While I am very critical of this as a piece of art, it is at least competent as an example of comic book craftsmanship. 
I don't imagine the professionals who created Daredevil Season 1 ever intended to promote it among their best work. Our loss, I guess. Season 1 writer Anthony Johnston is best known for his work on the comic book series Wasteland, but he also briefly wrote on Daredevil Volume 2 during the Shadowland event. Interestingly, though, Mr. Johnston also wrote one of my all-time favorite special issues, Daredevil Cage Match, a light-hearted retro story about Luke Cage and Daredevil having a fist fight for charity and personal pride. The art for this book was by Wellington Alves. A lot of his previous work includes prelude and tie-in comics for Marvel films, which makes sense. The art style of this particular book looks an awful lot like a comic book adaptation of a movie. A lot of the characters look slightly off compared to how we are used to seeing them depicted, and pulls a lot of inspiration from Batman instead of other Daredevil art. A closet in Matt's house has apparently been decorated by Alfred Pennyworth, as the devil suit is on display for a man who is blind. Daredevil crashes down on a car roof, just like the parking garage scene from the movie The Dark Knight. Matt stops for a moment to impersonate Batman on a rooftop, complete with gothic architecture and bats in the moonlight. In a flashback, Battle and Jack impersonates Little Mac. There is an apparent homage to Jim Lee's art from Batman Hush. And you remember the movie Batman Begins? Scarecrow inhales his own fear gas and hallucinates the Bat Monster? Well, here's the Dare Demon. Someone commented on my Fellowship of Fear review that Scarecrow first used fear gas after the creation of Mr. Fear, making Scarecrow more a ripoff of Mr. Fear instead of the other way around. Which means this panel is a ripoff of a ripoff of a ripoff coming full circle to the original source material. Well, I have had enough of ripoffs and rehashes. We've now completed our look at Daredevil's original yellow-suited adventures. By and large, these are great, classic books. But I've also gone out of the way to show you some of the bad ones, too. Next week, I'm going to reward myself, and you as well. I'm going to show you my favorite Daredevil comic book from the decade of the 1960s. Make sure you subscribe to the Fan Without Fear Completest Retrospective. Because next episode, we're going to pick up where we left off in the Silver Age of Marvel Comics. Until next time, always live without fear.